nine. It, it has grown to nine. The last one deals with youth and children in the church. So the package will be complete and Pastor Ajayi will serve for you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, I say the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, your manual. We're on page 76. Founding and money for territory taking projects. The place of money. The place of funding a money territory taking projects. The question is, or the dilemma is, if God says, I should go and take a territory, if God give me a project to do, either a church planting, or you plant a church, or a ministry project, or building project, or mission project, or whatever project, soul winning project, how do I fund it? Where do I get the money? We need to answer that question. Those who are close to me, they say, I don't know, I don't like money. Yes, I don't like money. But at the same time, I realize I need money for ministry. I need money to do this work. And I've, gone, I've done a lot of research. In fact, I have three books already I've written about money in ministry. I think this is my first one. Money, ministers, and ministry today. Then I remember doing this one some couple of years back, financial growth. And this is my last one. And me say, I read it again and again uh, with Jesus in the school of money. It covers everything the scripture says about money, especially the, 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 the proverbs, the examples, and the illustrations of Jesus about money in the scripture. So if you want to know more, after the message or during the week or later, you can visit our office to get. So because what I want to teach you today is not only what I read, it's not only what I study, but what I've experienced also. Taking this ministry, like what my pastor was saying, in those days, I don't have office. I don't have anything that just about to start. When I even want to pack it up. And I remember that statement say, You didn't pass you didn't pack persecution with your the, this is your luggage. I say, eh, hey. it was pastoring a Shomodu or Lale here by then. Yes, I remember. I went there. So I came back thinking, say so I should pack persecution. And he showed me Bible. Because it was Jesus who said it. He told his disciple, He said, You that have followed me, you that you are serving me. Uh -huh. In this world, I'll give you houses. I'll give you wife. I'll give you children. I'll give you all those things. Including persecution. I said, wow, it's true. I've not packed it. So from there on, what anybody says, what anybody do, it doesn't bug me. But another thing I didn't pack was how to make money for the ministry. And I've suffered through that. But thank God, at least I can speak to you today. I can tell you that you want to do ministry projects, God give you a project to do. Yes, sir, these are the right ways to get money for that work. So let's check your outline. Majority of gospel ministers are not well informed about the issue of money in the ministry of taking territories for the law. It happens to me first. And you know, we are not well informed because most of the books that we read about money in ministry, they are books of secular ministers. They are book of motivational speakers. They are from people that doesn't know the Bible. But they write from their own, from worldly view, worldly mindset. Those are the books we have been reading. I have read some of them also. But for some couple of years now, as I have seen some books that have to do with Christians and Bible, the way we should handle money. Because you see in ministry today, especially in this same time, there are two major evils. Money is number one. Immorality is number two. If we escape those two, I'm sure you will get to heaven. I mean, the Lord help us to escape them in Jesus' name. Okay, let's read on. It's either we are materialistic and worldly in our quest to acquire money for ministry, or we are reserved, poverty, celebrity, and our cake. You know, the first side, 
the first side, two, side, two sides of the coin. The first side are those who are worldly minded, carnal, and we can use any means. It doesn't matter. Once we get the money, we use it to bribe God. That's how armed robbers, they come to church to pay tithe and offering. And people that loot their company blind, they become pastors and they use that money to pastor churches. That is wrong. I know some couple of pastors like that. But at the same time, those of us who came from pure gospel background, those of us who have CAC, Christ Apostolic Church, Gospel Faith Mission, and uh, the Apostolic, all those, <laughs> most of us, we are cake in our approach to money. So let's balance it up. I believe that ministers must be biblical in every facet of our life, our work, our ministry, and assignment from God must be biblical. Anything we do, anything we practice, must have the foundation in balanced scripture. One of the benefits of working with God and for God is his financial blessing. Underline that one. If you are working for God, if God gives you an assignment to accomplish, Esa, he will bless you financially. You know why? Haggai chapter 2, verse number 8, the Lord said, silver and gold is mine. That's the picture I want to paint for you. Money is not evil if it is from God. I need you to note that. In actual fact, God is the source of money. He didn't create it in Genesis, but he allowed men to come up with the idea and he sanctified it. Money is neither good nor bad depending on how you use it. Or how you source it. And how you use it. And like I always love to say. And it's in my book also. Money is a good servant. But a terrible master. If you allow money to master you. You are in trouble. In fact according to the words of our Lord Jesus. He said that. You cannot serve God. And mama. Put it scripturally. The only force. The only power that is contending with God in the territory of our hearts and our life is mammon. That is the demon of money. So if you can be free from that demon, very well, you are on your way. And this territory, this project that God committed into our hand, it needs money, my people. If you have not admitted it, admit it to, and God is the source of that money. And it will supply for you in Jesus' name. So if you read Haggai 1, 20, uh, verse 8, uh, 2, 8, it says, silver and gold is mine. Also, if you read, if you read 1 Chronicles, chapter 29, 13 to 17, you see King David praying there. After they gave to the Lord, the offer offerings unto the Lord. He said, I pray. He said, oh, Lord, everything is from you. You are the source of everything. And the little you gave to us is what we have given back to you. Everything is from you. So God is the source. First Chronicles 29, 13 to 17. Is what I quote. They also in the New Testament, when we read First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and 19, he said, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who give us richly all things to enjoy. If we stay on that verse only, it's profound, sir. That's Apostle Paul. Write it to his pastor. Write it to his mentee. Write it to his son. In the faith, he say, charge them that are rich. And I hope you understand that that's a pastoral epistle. Uh, Timothy was pastoring the church in Ephesus. When Apostle Paul wrote that letter, charge them that are rich in this world. Obviously, there were rich Christians in the church by then. So it's not a crime. It's not a sin to be rich in the Lord. To be wealthy in the Lord. Or for God to bless you. It's not a sin. They were in the Ephesian church. Rich Christian. Wealthy Christian. Say, so charge them that are rich in this world. It's in this world though. Because all money cannot follow you to heaven. It came from here and we end here. We need to realize that. That are rich in this world. That they be not high-minded simply means that money, wealth, must not determine our worth, our worth in the Lord. 
If you can be rich and wealthy in worldly material, it doesn't mean you are rich and wealthy in spiritual material. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. We should not be proud. Nor should our trust be in money. But in the living God, money, we must never trust money. Must never trust our wealth. Must never trust those things that God allowed to come to raw. That should not inform our dressing, our behavior, our attitude, our conduct, our mindset, our lifestyle. Which is, the, which is what is happening at this end time. It shouldn't be. That our trust should not be in money. Because you see, when you have a lot of money, you have a lot of sin to commit. Because more money brings more sin to you. Give you more opportunity to sin and to do evil. If you don't use it rightly. Child them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. In other words, God can bless you financially. And when God gives you an assignment, He will give you the money to do it. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Okay? Whenever God deems fit to give you a, a ministry project to accomplish, how do you go about financing it? That's what I want us to look at. Church leaders, pastors, and preachers have gone to ridiculous extremes concerning finance. Please don't join that bandwagon. Don't go to ridiculous extremes. Then, there are too much misappropriation, mismanagement. I need you to underline that. God, those are sins, but with very good English. And so, too much misappropriation, mismanagement, corruption, kleptomania, and ingenious craftiness in handling God's money by preachers, overseers, and church leaders today. A lot is going on, which I don't need to enumerate, but which you know. But from latest information, let me show you one. A particular church did their convention recently. The who is who in that church? The who is who? The top leaders. Those who are up to. They employ their own ushers. They employ their own offering collectors. And they sew the same dress of the official of the church for them. And give them their own offering back. From my reliable source, each person makes nothing less than seven million. That's the level it has got to. So there's a lot of kleptomania. That's not stealing, you no. Know? That's kleptomania. That's stealing by style. It's going on in churches. So everybody now, grab as much as you can grab. Grab as much as you can grab. And that's why even when we plant churches today, we are not planting churches for kingdom expansion. We are planting churches for our... as many as we can get. That's why a lot of territories of heart, even people in church, like, I, like I, we have been saying since Tuesday, they are still untaking for the Lord. Because... Okay, I went somewhere. In that same denomination, they invited me. And I went somewhere. You know what I heard them say before my own session? The guy was just talking about money. He was even saying it without shame. Go and plant churches so that we can get more money. Yeah, I was there. I was sitting. I said, oh my God. He was using graph and saying those things. That look. And he was using Bible. I said that uh, rich lady. That lady in Luke chapter 13 that uh, she had been sick for 13 years and the Bible says she has spent all that she had and she, nothing better. They say when Jesus get that woman converted of course she left the whole money for Jesus. It's by inference so the Bible didn't say that too but by inference. They are looting. So you see that money issue has become real problem. Okay I remember I remember somebody died one archbishop died recently you know till he died he does a lot of evil. I don't know which heaven he will go to if he has not restituted, repented and restituted before he dies. Because you see, God is a quiet God. God will keep quiet. And you'll be finishing yourself. And he will not fight you. He will not fight you. He will not fight you. 
I'm waiting for you. This is a bishop that if ask bishop that if you invite him to your church, I can assure you he will come with his own ushers, and he will start raising offering in your name. But he will pocket his ushers will carry the offering away. I was saying somewhere, someone's arguing with me. I said, you don't know anything. I said, go and ask this. Go and ask this. Go and ask that. Since then, he kept quiet. I'm not saying it to destroy anybody. But I'm saying our ungodly practices when it comes to money. Today, we plant churches. And we have RO and DO and GO and RO and everything. Oh, what do we do? We collect 90, 100% of those local churches. And we bring it to our center. What do we do with those money at the center? We will waste it. And those local churches are suffering. That's not the way the Bible says we should do it. So me, I've arrived somewhere. Every minister, if you want to get to heaven, if you pastor in those kind of denominations, give them their money, but go and look for your own money. Go and fulfill Genesis 30, 30. When shall I prepare for my house? Don't say I'm pastor. They don't care for me. Care for yourself. They are not the one that call you. It is God that call you. And the salary that pay me is not enough. Then let God pay you. Because they are not paying you now. They are collecting most of the money that you are realizing. That doesn't mean you should be doctoring the books and working the books and changing it so that if 30,000 comes in, you first do the church expenditure before you report it. If the church expenditure is 20,000, you know, that's why it's all book. <laughs> well, yeah, you now write 10,000 and you give them about 9,000. It remains 1,000. And even God knows that you must fire the jail, you must take care of the worker, and all those things. No, give them their 30,000. Don't become a thief because of them. Because you are guilty by association. If you are silly, go and look for your own money. And that's all we want to look at. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, this one is not in your outline, but let me say this one to you. According to one of my books here, there are three ways God handles his ministers when it comes to money. Find your hope and be praying about it. And, okay, before I give you that, let me say this to you. It's not every calling that should result in full-time ministry. Listen to me and listen to me very well. It might go against what they are teaching you. But this is how to save yourself financially. If God did not specifically tell you, don't walk, I will feed you. Focus on this work. If God did not say that, don't become a full time. Or else, you are going to become a kleptomania. You are going to be stealing. Some of us have become full time before we know this truth. And another sense, common sense now. If you plant a church, let's say it's your church, God called you out to ministry. And God did not speak specifically to you that way. You planted a church. Once your church has not grown to 100 adult members, you have no business being a full-time minister. Go and find something to do. I will get there. I will tell you where you can locate money. Even in ministry. I will tell you. Money is everywhere, but it loves to hide itself. <laughs> something to be doing to augment the little that is coming because ministry has got to a level especially church today when you say bring so so and so money i need it you must give your own first if you don't give your own first they will not follow you have to give first then they will follow if all the time they pass the offering plate around you you are using style hey hey Ah, where's my pause, my envelope? <laughs> and when you are wasting time now, and time is going to say you can go, you can go. You will never give. You are just using time. People are watching you. So today's ministry, if you say people should give, you give first. So that's number one point. Now I've now seen three ways God handles ministers when it comes to money. Number one, He can provide all you need without you asking. That's what he did to Adam. Adam never had to ask anybody for money. For what God said he should be doing. The project, he should take care of the garden. He should do all that. Uh -huh. In fact, so far, he had nobody to ask from. God was the one that supplied all his needs without him asking. There are ministers like that. 
I have friends like that in ministry. When we do this kind of conference and we are running in debt, okay, I, I want to thank God for Pastor Daramola yesterday. Though I didn't ask him to do it, but it was a sweet bar. Now money raised. Because as I yesterday, we are still running in debt of 300,000. Yes, yeah, as I yesterday. About the conference. We are still running in debt of about 300,000. So God bless you, sir. You are in the spirit. You are in the spirit. So we can use that to settle the debt. Okay, I'll come talk about that later. But it's part of it. There are projects, there are ministries that God gives to you. He can't fund themselves at the beginning. If I ask you to pay more than four, even that 4,000, a lot of people are complaining. And it's the 4,000 that doesn't allow us to come. It's the 4,000 that doesn't allow us to come. And all those things. And you know, when I say 2,000 today, and by the ah, a lot of people are happy. In fact, that's what some people are waiting for. But you see, the truth is, we can't do it less than that. In fact, if I have my way, if it is me, if it is me, and what I'm seeing as a cost, I will not do anything less than 10,000 per person. Nobody, why buy? I know a lot of people are coming. Hey, what are they doing there? What is there? Where? When God anoints you to do big projects and you get into the project, you know that much is there. If I tell you how much we print this alone, if I tell you how much the big board alone, even not to talk of the food, the food is not my money. Okay, I contributed. But it's brethren. Most of our former students that got used to supply the money and some brought bag of rice and whatever so for that food. So God bless them. It's a teamwork. So I can't claim the glory. And you will see people that will support you in Jesus' name. So number one, God can supply your needs without you asking. Number two, God can ask you to speak to people Say, I'll give you a project. This is a project. This is the assignment. Oh, yeah, go and talk to people. Go and talk to people. Let them support. I'll put your money in, your, in their hand. That's what he did to Moses. He asked him to build a project. To do the, uh, the tabernacle in the wilderness. And he said, go and speak to people. And I've appointed Basale and Hola and all those people. And talk to them. I put the money in their hand. So there are people that go there. People like that. Me and see praying to get to that level new. I started asking, talking to people gradually. Uh -huh. Talking to people. And they are responding. I prayed and prayed, Lord, let me be enjoying this one also. Because it's not in my character to speak to people about my needs. I don't, I don't find it easy. But I'm getting there gradually. Because all of you that I'm looking at, my money is in your pocket. If you don't bring it today, you bring it tomorrow. And if you don't bring it, I know who I will send to you. is the Lord. You just be dreaming. You be seeing me every day of your dream. I know that I wear uh, I wear good dress, but I will have cane in my hand. Number three, God can ask you to walk. Number one is God can supply your needs without you asking, like He did to Adam. Number two. God can give you a project and ask you to go and talk to people to bring the money. And number three, God can say, okay, I need the money from you. So he will give you an idea. He will give you opportunities. He will give you work to do. Uh -huh. And you get the money through your work. When you have a good business, sir, or when you have a good employment, and God is calling you, as I stop all this foolish cancelling, you go to collect. And they say, resign. Resign. I'm going to become full time. A lot of people have done it. And they have sentenced themselves to penury. And the suffering. They have no blessing of heaven. If God did not speak laconically to you, don't resign. No. It's a young work. It's a work that needs money also. Oh, look at people like Kumuyi. Why didn't he resign? Why did Kumi didn't resign? When he was teaching, he was a lecturer. He started that ministry in 1974 now. He didn't become full-time until around 1996. More than 20 years later. How about even Pastor Adeboe? 
Even when it, be, it was when he became geo, that uh, he was resigning gradually. Because this work needs that money. And if God say you are the first person that will sponsor this project, what can you do? So this idea of full time, part time, let's put it aside though. It doesn't work for everybody. Am I talking to somebody? Okay, let's go to your outline now. How were projects financed in the Bible? Look at that quote there. God's project done in God's ways and in God's time. We never lack his water provisions. Now let's look at them one by one. The creation of heaven and earth. How was that project financed? By faith, Holy Spirit incubation, and the word of power were the currency that God used. That's what God used initially. That's how he sponsored the creation of the world. Okay, the building of the ark of Noah. How did Noah sponsor that project? It was Noah's personal money. Uh, he can't borrow from anybody because most of the people doesn't believe in it. Because according to the Bible, then rain doesn't come down from heaven. It is missed from the ground. So when Noah is preaching, the Lord say, flood is coming. Repent of your evil and come to this ark of salvation. Who will sponsor the project? It was his personal money. Ah, thank you, sir. You are welcome. Uh -huh. I was still at his convention last week. He was telling me the personal more money he used for that project. Some of us have to sell our houses. Yeah. Some of us have to sell our cars for this work. But you know, they will teach you today. You can, if that is what God determined for you, yes, sir, it's part of it. That's the way the Noah built the ark. He used his personal money and effort to finance the project because nobody believed it. So if God is saying, do your work, he creates a source of income for you. Uh -huh. So what's the work? You know, one of the foolishness I've seen, I've seen small church that cannot even contain uh -huh, those of us who are here, those of us in this axis, not up to that place. So, okay, from Baba, from Baba, and that cameraman, go to the back there. Uh -huh, that's the whole church, oh, the whole structure, oh, and it's a boulder with plank, not even permanent. And the pastor, or the bishop, or the apostle, or whatever I call himself, it's riding Jeep. A small lunat lunatism. Why don't you sell that jeep? That's a project. But no, 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 no. God will do it by himself. The one he has done, use it all. Because I will tell you something I know about God. If God gives you a one million naira vision, he will give you ten thousand naira cash. How do you get the rest? Faith, obedience, prayer, patience, and passing his test. Because he will test you. God is not a foolish God. He's not a mumu. He knows us. He gives you a one million naira vision. You think he will give you the whole money at a time? Lila, it doesn't work that way. He will be releasing it to you gradually. And the more faithful you are, you are using it to watch. He said you should use it for. Uh huh. You are passing his test. Sometimes what he release to you, he will even test you. He said, carry the whole money. Go and give it to another person. That is the money that you say, ah, Lord, what do you, I need this money. You better go and give it. Because that's a test. I'll come again if you don't understand it. He's going to give you a one million naira vision. How much will he catch? Will he give to you? But how do you get the rest? Prayer, patience, obedience, test. That's what many of us don't know. That's why you are jealous and envious of others. No. If God has blessed your ministry, you have your personal house, you are riding Jeep, you are doing everything, you have the kind of complex, I celebrate with you. Your time has come. My own time will come. I know before somebody can put up this kind of place, man, he must have passed a lot of tests. God must have dealt with him so much. Hello? Look at the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's another project. God asked Moses to raise suffering from the people. He gave them all chance and specific among 
It was God that steered the people to do what to, to give. We don't force people to give. Moses did not force them. Is there anybody whose heart God touched? When God asks you to ask people for money, Esther, it must be people whom God touched their hearts. Why? God loves a cheerful giver. It's not by force. It's not by force. When we are forcing people, compelling people, weeping and crying and lying and doing all that, just to collect offering from people, we are out of God's will. It's whosoever wills. But modern preachers don't want that. They say, God, doesn't touch your heart. I will touch your heart. I will touch your pocket. Bring this money, my friend. Go and borrow. And that's why there are churches where people, because they know they must raise offering, they must collect offering on Sunday, and they ask for big money. A lot of members are getting involved in a lot of crookedness. That's not God's will. God asks Moses, Oh yeah, this project that I gave to you, the way you finance it, I put the money in the hand of people. Go ask them. But it is people I touch their hearts. I know because he allowed God to touch their hearts. The people even overbring. They brought so much that Moses had to say, it's okay. It's okay. The temple of Solomon. His father David provided. I had it both um, uh, Solomon got uh, I mean King David provided to build that temple. He took gifts from his friends, from kings, and they brought many from the king of Tyre. He collected timber. They sent sheep. So sometimes in ministry, God give us good friends who have clean money. And when we ask them. They want to support the project that God has said we should do. It must be God's project, Sha. Number six or five. The repair of the temple. How was, it, how was this funded? According to Second Chronicles there, the offerings of the people were much and savings was made and the repairs of the house of the Lord was made from the water to savings. When Israelite was still bringing offering, they were bringing offering, so they were saving it. They kept some people in charge who were saving. They were not chocolating everything. You know what? There are times in ministry, God will be blessing you, bringing money, bringing money. That's not the time to go and buy two, three, four, five cars and build houses here and there like Satan. That's the time to save because project is coming. Project is coming. Hello? I've had I have problem with people in the past. You know, I always believe in teamwork. But I want people that, that want to follow the Bible. People that are submissive and teachable. Yeah, they are gifted. I brought a lot of people. There was even a time I made a mistake. I called some people. I said they are our conference planning, our, our advisory board and all those things. The first time we did meeting, Pastor, you remember. The first time we did meeting, he was there. One of them said, you know what we are going to do? If you want to be your board, in this is your church goes to ministry. <laughs> Anytime you do a conference, when you finish, give us reports. And how much comes in, I will share it. He was there. He was there. I would you to read. I tell you, I don't shake, shake, I'm on dance. And when me to one, no one. I say, eh? He say yes. <laughs> I say, okay, will you sponsor the conference? Say, like that, God has blessed you now. Sponsor it. We will share the profit. Then I ask a question. I said, okay, if we share the profit this time, how do we sponsor the next one? And they say, ah, you know how you get your money. Of course, I didn't tell them to go I use strategy until everybody left. Because I can't share it. You didn't sow. When you didn't sow, you should not reap there. And when they were, well, you don't, let me say more than that. But it will happen in your ministry also. Because when people see ministry and they see God is at work, ah, everybody wants to strategically place themselves so they'll be stealing and shoplating and all those things. Hmm. Okay, look at the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem by Nehemiah. What are the three sources that support that work for him? How did he get the funding? Nehemiah, 
his, soli his, his solicitation. He asked for help, especially from his boss, from the king. After fasting and praying, he asked for help. There are times that God will ask you to go and speak to people. Ask for help. Because he has a project. He asked for help. Now, I started getting there. I asked for help. I've asked for help from two people now. And one of them has resp responded. I thank God for him and God will bless him. I don't need to reveal that one for you, but my pastor knows the person. I reveal it to him. And what project do I have? We have a 34-acre land. And in the next three, four years, we want to turn into where we can be taking this conference to. We bought the land. We've done all that. In fact, we we'll spend six million. Get approved from the government. Well, microphone in the bedroom. If I change the battery here, in the bedroom. We got the approval last year, December. And you say they just put the approval. Two years. If you don't do anything in two years, you have to start the process again. And it was one pastor's wife, God bless her, who saved us. Everything they calculate was eight million, including the official, the official's money. She was one bit it down to six. Wow. I said you will be a project manager for that savings that you did. Because if it is other Christians, they will even say the eight million is not enough. They build their own into it. But she saved us three million. So I started praying. I said, Lord, we need to start this project before that three year expire out. We need to start something because it's still a forest. And I started asking for help. And I'm asking for help also. If this ministry has blessed you, if you have gained anything in this ministry before. Okay, somebody sent me a WhatsApp this morning. He said he has bought 20 of my books. And he followed what I wrote there. That he has planted a church. And he's planting churches. I say, hallelujah. That's a great one. Hey, I'll still tell him something soon. I have not told you. So if this thing has worked for you, uh -huh, be part of that project also. Because it's for the body of Christ. It's going to be a camp just for leaders. Not any riffraff. If you are not a leader, don't come there. Don't come there. But once you are a leader, from being a Sunday school teacher, uh -huh, and you want to do things, uh, it's a training camp. It's a, where all materials you need to grow church, to do ministry, will be available. But as for our school there, we'll move our school there. So our school, this one you are coming, and you are coming for six months, every Monday, or every Thursday. Mm, when we get there, you don't need that. Two weeks, you come on Saturday, it was Sunday night, you go back home Saturday morning. One week, we have finished six months' work. Another week, we'll finish. You're on your way. It will be residential. They do it abroad. We need to have it here. Hello. So that's the project. Nehemiah solicit. And I'm not ashamed to solicit for that. Then you raise up partners. We need partners also. Okay, okay. Volunteer. Unpaid workers. <laughs> they leverage on platform opportunities. Any opportunity he has, he uses it to talk about the project. Then Jesus' ministry here or now. Let's look at the ministry of our Lord. This is our model and example in funding our ministry. How did he do it? He took offering from people. Yeah. It's not a crime to take offering. Provided it to be used for the right purpose. Everybody that comes to church, come to service, come to meeting, know that you must not appear before the Lord your God empty-handed. And I do say jokingly, but it's true also. There are three, there are three solid, fundamental, fundamental quality of a good service. Number one, a good praise and worship. Number two, a good and superb preaching and teaching. Number three, a wonderful offering. Don't let us emphasize the offering before the sermon. The sermon is important. The preaching is important. The worship is important. So the three must be complete. If you want to make it number four, a good prayer session. Don't do service without offering. Because those who did it in those days, they don't get blessed. When we give money, we are not giving it to men. We are giving it to God. An offering is part of our worship. And they ask offering there. They ask for offering there. What's, what's your problem? 
The people of God has been giving offering since the time of uh, creation. It's just that we must not manipulate people. Let them give willingly, but we must give offering. So Jesus took offering. Then number two, he has partners. He has partners like Joseph of Arimathea and certain women. God can help you to raise partners. But their source of income must be clean, no? It's not partners that are blood suckers who will donate blood money. You know, ministry has got to a level today when somebody is bringing money, 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 money. Yes, sir. Where are you working? How do you make this money? He said, ah, Pastor, don't worry. You should worry, oh. Because the day police will catch up with him, they will arrest you. He will pick you as one of those who restore goods. Then, savings. <laughs> Jesus said, gather the fragments so that nothing be lost. We save. It's wrong, sir. In your church, in your ministry, your account is always in the red. Everything you make on Sunday or weekend, you finish spending it. It's wrong. Because if you don't save, you are not safe. You must save. Or keep something there. No eat with your ten fingers. Uh, 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 people line up now. They always ask for help. Yes. Go and devise a means. Because you know today's church, the way people are carrying money, and we pastors that are rich and wealthy, what we are projecting, the image we are projecting, is as if church has all the money. We don't have all the money. That's why they are robbers in congregation. When they are raising money, they are doing everything. After service, they go and hands up them and collect money. Even pastors are organizing arm robbers to steal money, church money. Oh, you didn't know that? Ah, look at a priest at Ekiti. Thank God it's happened at Ekiti State, not on those states. Imagine a priest kidnapping himself. I want to ask the church to pay 50,000 ransom. How much is 50,000? So safe. So if people ask you, I know young churches, young churches, young churches, there's so much pressure. If you say, well, who is coming for the first time? Come, 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 come. They come out, they come out. After service, the next thing they say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, I want to see you. This is your Pekin. I've not eaten since yesterday. Because they saw the cars. They saw how people are dressed. So they just wait. Ah, there's money in their hand. There's money in their hand. So they put a lot of pressure on you. In fact, I know what you're... <laughs> Okay. Can I say something? If God bless you personally, maybe through your husband or through your wife or through your friend, whatever, either you inherit something or you have done business, you have money, don't show it in church. And can I say this to you? This is what I discovered. I didn't read it in books, so I've seen it too. When you are a wealthy person and you planted a church, you bought the instrument, you buy the equipment, you do it regularly like this, your people will never give. Go and check the offering. People don't give. You know their mentality. Ah uh ah. -uh. How can we be pouring water inside the Indian Ocean? The pastor is ocean already. My own little six liter tank. I can't be pouring it inside. I know many churches like that. Ah, uh, you know. Okay, if you follow history, if you follow story, there's a church in Mushi many years ago that is called Free Gospel. If you are an older minister, you will know. They don't collect offering. In fact, they will even give you pocket money. And you know the parlor started like that also. I still remember when the parlor doesn't collect offering. When Kumi is saying, in Jesus' name we pray. You stand up and you are, you are good. Mungu ba tia pauri wata lo yawo. Kula du sumulu lo ya five million. They start where they start was that they start putting offering bag, the offering box. I remember offering box. They start putting it. I said that that's how they manage it. Manage it. today they collect offering, offering every service. If they don't collect offering, how do they build that bagada? You know that bagada like Jesus is not coming back. As if you enter, I know that Bagada, it was a swamp. 
who were the first set to worship there. We are less than 3,000 by there. It was a swan and mosquito would be. How did they get money to do that? They didn't leave it to people not collecting offering. Don't mind what people like Father Fritz or uh, Mother Fritz or Sister Fritz is saying. Let's follow Bible. Am I talking to somebody? Say, there's supernatural provision. If you look at Apostle Paul's ministry, yes. Apostle Paul's ministry. How did he fund it? He was a tent maker. Tent maker. What was that one? He had a job. He had a career. That's the third way God deals with people. He asked you to walk. Did you notice that even the churches that Paul planted, they never gave him money. He said it to the Philippian Christians that what you brought to, I saw it. I saw it. It's a well sacrifice. A sweet smelling savor that God loved. Therefore, my God, my God, my God, shall supply all your need. That one, now my mama, they call now but Tom Stoneman prayer. All the churches that didn't bring anything. He didn't pray like that, oh. <laughs> but this one, he said, my God, he personalized it. Because why? I don't collect what you brought. And you say you have a father, you have a mentor, you have a leader. Go over. I call a baba. I call a baba. I told you 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 Hello. Where does money hide today? Paul received offerings. He received support. He did not defraud nor shit anybody. I love Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 2. The Apostle Paul said, He said, Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have defrauded no man. Yes, sir. That must be our testimony in ministry. That we did not defraud anybody. No one, one actually that died recently. This one is not the say, it is in the papers. That's why I read papers every day. There are a lot of stories about some pastors in newspapers that you don't read. Some guys, either in this church or where he went to minister, they are businessmen. They have a company. And they say you should use this, uh, is it apostolic or prophetic office to be the chairman of that company? You know what he did? He used that platform to borrow money and close down the company. The company closed down bankrupt. The case is in court. But now that he's died, I don't know what they are going to do with that case. It's wrong. It's taking advantage of our people. If they say you are a reverend, you are a man of God, yes, I come and be the special patron of this our company. Be our shaman. Be covering us spiritually because they are companies who does that. They are believers' companies who does that. And they'll be giving you some things. Yeah, you don't demand, but they give it to you. Just be praying for them. It's happening, sir. It's, men of God will not tell you, but that's one of the places they get money. There are a lot of believers' companies. Have you seen that when the company is doing Thanksgiving, they invite a preacher to come and preach? What do you think they gave to that preacher? Or you see a preacher that go and preach or go and do thanksgiving for Lagos State or any state government. Do you think it's not? At least they don't come back, they come back with 50 million. That's a cut it short. They both judge the my payroll. He did not defraud anybody. Ministers must never defraud. Okay, let's go down. Ministers don't pursue money but attract money in ministry. Look at where money hides. Money hides in God. The nature of money is that you will not see it outside. Okay, let's do an example. Look up at me here. Brethren, look up at me. Look up at me. Take away your outline, eye from the outline for a moment. Look up at me. This is the question. Is there money in the house? Is there money here? But where is it? Where is it? It's in our pocket. It's in our bag. It's in our phone. It's in all this thing. Yeah, that's the nature of money. Money loves to hide. You don't see money on the street. No, if you are waiting to see money on the street, you, if you pick it, you can become cockroach. <laughs> oh, how could that be? I want to be? Money loves to hide. Hide in places. Hide in places. Now, I've checked my own Bible, and I've checked experience. Look at where money hides. Number one, it hides in God. So if you really want to get money with peace of mind, correct money, go to God. 
Go to him and pray and seek him and do what he asks you to do. You will see money. Number two, money hides in uh, people. Ah, come on. And why you go long? Every day you are in London. Kilo ku. That's why your church must grow. That's why your people. That's why you must. Your ministry must bless people. Your ministry must impart people, not for money. But those people, when your ministry impart them, they'll bring money. I remember Pastor Ajay was telling me a story some couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he said there is a woman. She's a Christian. No? She goes to a Pentecostal church. But she's around, is it not around 55 years old? She has never married. She had, she had no child. And she has no husband. Nothing. But she has money. And she said she has prayed and prayed and prayed. So he said they brought her to him. And uh, he said, does God see answer prayer? Ah, he said the answer. He said, God see answer prayers. He said, I don't believe it. I prayed. God gave me everything, but he has not given me a husband. And he said, he told her, started telling stories that God see answer prayers. In fact, he answers my prayers. After I say, he said, the woman was still doubtful. Then he said, he asked the woman, okay, what do you want God to do for you now that you want him to answer prayer? To prove to you that God see answer prayer. He said, I want God to reverse my age 20 years backwards. I said, he, he said, he asked her, how will you know that God reversed your age? 21. He said, if, I, if God reversed me to 35, as we do doing my men's mon monthly circle as a woman, then I know I have hope that I will marry. I have a child. He said, he just raised his hand and prayed. He said, Lord, you hear what she said, though? So do it for her. He said, the Lord just ministered to him that, you want that to happen? Tell her. They say, there's a baptistry. He has a baptistry in his church at the back of the church where they do water baptism for new convert after teaching. They say, Tell her to go and dip herself in that baptistry. He said he was afraid. Say, Hey, if she goes to the baptistry and uh, she <laughs> and she drowned, police will come and arrest me. So he called one of the evangelists, Evangelist, take this woman to that baptistry. Let her imagine herself. If anything happened to her, at least it is you. It's not me. So that was his idea. See? And the evangelist took her there. And she just immersed herself in the water. Ordinary water for obedience. There's no power in that water. But the power is in the obedience to the voice of the Lord. And she went and immersed herself. Once she immersed herself under, the next thing is that her menses came out. I think she's about to marry very soon. You know what happened? The jeep she brought, four by four, she handed over the keys. Say, Pastor, take this one as first installment. And this show wrote to the you know, Mama, Daddy, saw that one. You don't understand that one. All of you that are praying for people. This woman doesn't have a child. No, give her a child. Give her a child. In Jesus' name, you fast. You pray seven days. It'll be like, say, God, no answer. The answer. But now your prayer might be the foundation for the problem. They will just bring it to me. I'll just say, shh. Woman, take this water and drink. I will get belly. Now me go bring the money to Not be you where you start out. Money hides in people. Money has a vision. You have a vision, there's money there. You have anointing, there's money there. You have power ministry, money there. Did God give you an idea? You have a skill, you have a work, a gift, a talent, a product that you are selling, or services you render, problems you solve, seeds that you sow, prayers you pray, even your sermon, in your books, in your outline, your writing skill, your singing ability, your expertise, your consulting, your lands, your properties, monies are hiding there. My prayer, may God give you idea. May he give you the wisdom to start up money in those places. Let's round it up. Let's go to the next page. Be sure the project is of God or of a good one. If you are looking for money to finance your project, Make sure that project is from God. If it's not from God, God will not supply. 
God will not pay for what he has not ordered for. Number two, pray and sow over the project until you hear God's go ahead. That is if you have a project that you want to do, you want to plant a church, you want to do a building, you want to do ministry, and go ahead. Hey, pray, pray, pray. And when you have a body to sow, amazingly, that's another way God sponsor project. When you have an opportunity to sow, you see people that are here, hey, go and sow. Me, I started sowing. In fact, I sowed, and I'm going to sow towards that our project. I went looking for people that had that similar project. I sow into it. I see people that have that similar project. I sow into it. It's part of it, sir. You are reminding God, I'm sowing to this one so that they can sow to this one. Because take it or leave it. It is giving and taking. It goes around the whole world. You come, you come, you come fund and sponsor God's project. If I stitch it, or I can die gum is in your hand. Go and sow to good lands. Go and sow to places where God is at work. Go and sow to projects that is to the glory of God. I remember Dr. James telling me a story. He said he was looking for money to do a certain project in the church. And he said, money was no longer coming. He said, suddenly, he called his people say, let's drive around. Let's drive around. And they drove around. And they saw one church that the project had been stopped. The building project had been stopped for years. He said they stopped. And he called, say, I need the pastor of this church. And the Baba came out. Baba, you haven't finished this building. He said, yes. How much will it take to roof it and finish it? He said, the amount. He said, he gave it to the man. The man prayed. The man prayed. He said, the following week, all the amount he was needing, he was looking for for his own, God supplied. One of the ways to sponsor project is you two must sold to similar projects. Am I talking to somebody? But if you are there, ah, ah, ah. If I get this one, which one will come back? Ah, uh, you are blocking the way. That's part of the test. Okay. Are you still around? We're almost praying now. We're almost praying now. Okay. Number. Get expert advice on the project. Yeah, don't just do it anyhow. Because it's, what is worth doing? It's worth doing well. Be pragmatic about your finances and the project. If you have to build up your finances through work, through effort, before the project will come to fruition, before you can start, so that you will not start and you will be able to continue. Have a long-term plan for your project. Do it stage by stage. Invest. You can't do everything at once. Avoid fire brigade and spontaneous project. Then use all available opportunities to finance your project. Start small and grow with it gradually. Of course, believe God for supernatural supply. They have a clean record of income and what to expenditure. Once people give to your project, have a clean record of expenditure. Use it for what you say you will use it for. Like a man of God gave me money for a project. Of course, I've assured him. We are using it for what you say we should use it for. We are not going to divert it. Because you see, when you divert money, it erodes people's confidence in you. You are coming out with excuses. And this is the reason. And you see, the moment you gave me that money, this is what happened. I cannot use it. Yes, sir. They will not give you another one. Then don't ever spend it all. Don't ever spend it all. Learn to save. Now, I want us to end it in prayer. And this is the statement I want us to pray with. The people that God will use to sponsor your project are the people your ministry are blessed. Are the people you have ministered to. Largely. God can appear to people, you can speak to them, yes. But majority of the people that God will use to sponsor your projects are the people that your ministry has blessed. If you read Luke chapter 8, verse 2 and 3, the Bible says, Mary, Susanna, Mary Magdalene, and uh, Susan, wife of Chusa, and many other women whom Jesus has ministered to. What did they do? They were the one that ministered back out of their substance. And you can get that in two ways. Minister to people, but at the same time, 
Don't be ashamed to tell them. If this ministry has blessed you, if God has edified you, your life has been transformed. It's not a crime, sir, to bring back and show appreciation. In fact, the one that received miracle, 10 lepers that were healed, and they never come back to give time. Jesus noted it. He said, is it not 10 lepers that were healed? Only one came back to give thanks. He noted it. So if you have been going somewhere, that's the idea of sowing to your church, sowing to your leader, sowing to your minister, or somebody that has been a blessing to your life. You should be doing periodically because that's what happened to Jesus. People that his ministry has blessed. They sow back. But you see, we need to pray. Let's stand up on our feet. Because there are people we have ministered to. God has used our gifting. He used our graces for. But they never come back to appreciate. That's why a lot of ministers are suffering. We don't take care of our leaders here. And a lot of leaders respond oh, and suffer and suffer and suffer and minister. The only thing we'll be saying, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. When then? No, let's change from that attitude. It's not a scriptural attitude. If God has used somebody for you, uh, there's no crime, sir. You are not paying back. You are just showing appreciation. You are not paying back. You can't pay back. Because what God has used me to minister to you, even pastor, who labor, who fast, who pray, over church, ah, uh ah. -uh. Is it a crime for people to show appreciation back to the pastor? And you, pastor, when people show appreciation, don't say, I don't want it. Collect it. Even though you are going to show it back, you can show it back to his life. You can show it back. <laughs> okay, I don't want to tell you stories. But I remember somebody came. He said, he's giving me his... What do you people call this one you do in January? He said, he's giving me first food. And it was his whole salary. And I know the person. I was thinking, how will he live throughout the whole month? How will he live throughout the whole month? I said, no. He said, it is God. Who said I should do it? I said, okay. I collected it. But the following week, I gave him some money. He said, what for? I said, I just feel late to give it to you. That's how I gave him money throughout the whole month. I say it's me. I'm giving it to you. And it is this money I'm distributing back. <laughs> it's this money. Because I was thinking, how is he going to live throughout this month? He has wife. He has family. He has, and I know his finances. But what he did is good. He obeyed the scripture. Me self, I obeyed the scripture. I obeyed the scripture. I didn't even allow him to say, I said this weekend, this weekend. You can have this. Hey, oh God, where did you get this? I said, it's just my free will offering. Just feel like giving to you. Yeah. I did formula. I do a you letter, Lord. And I love that. I reject stinginess in my life. I reject poverty mentality in my life. I am a giver from today. Because I will receive money. I will receive finances. I receive support to carry out God's project. Open your mouth and pray in Jesus' name.